Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another screencast. Uh, today we're going to go into some Noctic weather maps. And if you take a look at the map below here, you can see there's quite a bit of information on it. A lot of which we've already discussed before, but we haven't put it all together. So we can see our ISO bars outlined in the red lines right here, associated with our high pressure. We also see here little areas of green where we have areas of precipitation. Uh, these red and blue bars, which we haven't talked about yet, but we're going to be talking about today. And what, probably the biggest thing to notice is all these little symbols right here. Those will get it up to probably within the next screencast or two. But you can see we have a huge information all put on one map. And what we're going to be doing here is trying to decipher some of this information and then go through and try to actually make weather forecasts within the next few screencasts. But one of the first things I like to point out are these right here. So we have these little red areas and then also these little blue areas right here, these blue lines. And most of you can probably figure out this time that red and blue we're going to most likely associate with temperature. And we can see, so something is going to, with temperature is going to be uh, concerned those two areas. Those two areas are called fronts. Those red and those red half moons and those blue triangles are fronts, and they're nothing more than the boundary of the inf interface between two air masses. What we'll almost always notice that at the interface of these fronts or the boundaries of these fronts or where they kind of come together, the air is going to be unstable. Unstable air is usually associated with rising air and then clouds will follow and sometimes precipitation all right so unstable air rising air rising air is going to usually have clouds clouds associated with precipitation okay if we look at page 13 on our reference table we can see this little diagram down here and it gives us all the symbols associated with the type of front that it is so there's four different fronts that we'll be looking at within this screencast. So cold fronts, we'll start there. We can see that cold fronts right here. We have the blue line with the little triangles on it. So the triangles, sometimes you think of them as icicles, so it helps you remember that they're cold, but you also have the reference table to remind you of that. But basically cold air is gonna move into an area occupied by warm air. It's gonna be cooler air going in. The cold air is more dense and pushes against and underneath the warm air. That cold air hugs the ground. It stays very close to the ground. So when it comes in, it forces that warm air up. Warm air rises. So there's that key word again, the rising air. It's gonna produce thick clouds. And what we also know is that wind speed increases because now we have a greater difference in pressure. And remember, the bigger the difference in pressure, the faster the wind speeds. And we're also gonna see the air pressure dropping. It's forcing that air up and precipitation will occur right along the front. Sometimes we'll draw that right here. That'll be our precipitation line. Here's this little diagram that is a, a, definitely a great diagram of how a cold front works. We can see that cold air moves into an area, hugging along the ground. There it is, hugging along the ground. And what happens is it forces this air up, that warm air. And then you can see we get these nice clouds here and the rain occurring right at that front. Okay, so it's a very good diagram. I would definitely copy this diagram down. It is a great diagram, very easy. So you can pause it here, but I'm gonna keep going. Okay, this diagram also, a couple of little bit pieces of information on here that we definitely don't need, but we could see here, the cold front still moves in, a little bit three-dimensional like, you can see the front along here. And what happens is that warm air is pushed up, 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 and around. And so you can see our little cirrus clouds associated over here. But what we have is just that warm, sorry. What we have is this warm air getting forced up. Temperatures, as you would one would expect, as a cold front comes through, the temperatures are gonna be cooler behind the cold front. So you can see here with these two diagrams, this is a nice little diagram right here. This is the one I would copy down right there. Nice little diagram, easy to copy. Shows you how your front is moving, but then also the temperatures associated with it. 
our next type of front are warm fronts. So the exact opposite, these warm fronts, air mass moves into an area occupied by colder air or cooler air. The warm air is less dense and moves on top of the cold air mass. So you have this warm air comes in and it actually rides up over the back of this cold air. And we have rising air, rising air cools, clouds form, and we see the precipitation follows, but the rain here will last for a longer period of time. Temperatures are warmer behind a warm front. So this diagram along the side here, I'd get that one. It's a pretty easy diagram to copy. It's got its temperatures on it and shows you where it's cooler and warmer. Here, nice diagram on our warm fronts. You can see the warm front right here. The air rides in and slowly goes up over the back of that cold front. So because it's slow over a period of time, we see is we get this it's clouds that are drawn way out. And so we get precipitation well ahead of the warm front. Then we have stationary fronts. Stationary fronts are a cold air mass and a warm mass collide with no movement. So you can see here, they're running alongside of each other. They kind of come in and then just stay there. No real movement because there's no movement, but we do have some unstable air. We have rain that will last for many days. Okay, and there's another little diagram for it. You can see that warm air moving this way, the cold air moving that way, and the air rising to form clouds. Then we have an occluded front. In an occluded front, this is our fourth and final front, we have cold air catches up to cool air. And what happens is it forces our air up right in between the boundary of it. So these are our cloud formation. And notice we have the rain right here at the front. So that warm front gets caught in between those two cool fronts. Okay. And this is just showing the features of an included front right here. So a little bit more complicated the diagram, but you can see the fast moving cold air. It's cold air over here. And our poor little warm air is stuck right in the middle of them. And that's where we have our precipitation. Okay, I will stop the screencast here because we've gotten through the four major types of fronts. Next time we meet, we'll do the mid-latitude cyclone. It'll be short, but I'd rather hold off a little bit to make sure that we have our four fronts down pat. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you look forward to our mid-latitude cyclone screencast. I will. You have a good day. Take care. Goodbye.